Hello and welcome to the Sabrina and Ben Hour here on this beautiful Tuesday uh, here on 1240 AM Hot News Talk Radio. I'm glad to have Mark with us today. He was feeling under the weather last week. That's right, but I'm back in action. I'm glad you are. The pollen had gotten to you, hadn't it, honey? Oh, well, no kidding. Goodness. Well, we are so... It wasn't hard work with Sabrina. I no. mean, her making you work hard. No, and I'm used to that. It was oh, okay. the pollen that was the change. Well, we are so honored to have with us today none other than Marty Haynes, who uh, is currently the county commissioner for the District 3 area, and he just won the primary uh, election for the Republican Party to be the next assessor of property. Thank you for taking the time to come in and visit with us today, Marty. I know you're busy. Uh, we are all busy. I'm not the only one, but thanks for having me. This, uh, this station is actually about... Uh, a thousand yards from where I grew up, wow. uh, just over on Hamill Road. So yeah, it's not very far at all. So this is this is home. This and is this very, is this is in this, your district. We are in District Three. We are in good old well, District we're, Three. We're glad to be over here supporting the the Higson community <laughs> and spending our tax dollars. We might even get lunch over here and try to generate little tax <laughs> dollars. Good, for that'd you. be good. We we need all the revenue we can get. Of course, it all gets dispersed. But uh, you know, we need we need the market share coming to this side of the river. We don't need it all on your side. Of the That's river. right. So, That's right. Well, Marty, there's it hadn't been that long ago since I ran my first political race, and it's amazing just the time and energy. Yeah. Uh, that goes into running a race. And I know that you're glad yeah. that, that the primary is over and now you can look forward to August. Well, so I guess kind of tell us, uh, it, it had to be different running a countywide race versus a district. It race. is, it is different. And obviously like you grew up in my home yeah. district, Hickson middle Valley, where, where I ran for school board first and then the county commission. But when you start going countywide and it imagine. just, it's, it's a big County and, you know, if it's if it's in your home community, you kind of know where you're going and right. exactly who you need to see and what how, how long it takes to get somewhere. Exactly. And if I'm going to Appison or if I was going to Lookout Valley, you know, you just had to plan just basic transportation or travel time. You had to plan a little differently and who you were going to see and how long to allot for everything. But it is running countywide is a full time job. So do you it, think it was more challenging to oh, run yeah. countywide versus yeah. the district? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's, well, you know, in in our districts, you know, we know a right. lot of people. I mean, whether they're involved at the at the major churches or the schools True. or you know at the youth leagues or whatever, so you know you have a lot of built in relationships. And you know, we all say that politics is all local, so yeah. you had that base to run from at least in your own district. Well, obviously, I don't know a lot of people in East Ridge or maybe Oodlaw for that matter. You know, some folks, but it's just reaching out and trying to build relationships and trying to find folks that that'll help you and and be involved. And that's that's the tough part is getting volunteers involved. Right. It's easy. You know, I could have had an event in Hickson every week, but you know, you, you want to branch out and go to different yeah, areas. Yeah, It's a lot of hard work. People don't understand they And do when not. you're the candidate, there's no way to describe it. <laughs> they're, they're really, you can't make anyone fully understand. I've what probably it's told like. you this, but everybody needs to see their name on the ballot at least yeah. once just to, just to get that, you know, that, feeling when you're you're actually there you're going to vote for yourself but you've worked yes. to that point and you know that is the most nervous 30 minutes you know i've not had children i mean i have right. two adult sons but i didn't bear the children but other than them being born that few minutes waiting on those results to come in especially the early votes and then yeah. you know the couple hours it takes to get them all in that's some of the most anxious because it's not so much that you worry about winning or losing at that point you don't want to disappoint all the people that helped you and worked oh, so yeah. hard for you or donated money or whatever they may have done. It's just, it, it's an overwhelming and you've been there. You know what it's like well, to feel that. You know, one thing that I, I felt um, when, when I was running every day, I just wanted to go, 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 go. Oh, yeah. Because at the end, I knew at the end when it was election day that I wanted to be able to look back and say, Absolutely. there's nothing else I could yeah. have done. Exactly. I did it all. Right. I, I turned over every stone that was possible yeah. and I ran the race. Yeah. So. I remember primary night, March 1st, you know, at the end of voting hours, it was eight o'clock and I was standing out at the Harrison Ruritan club. Yeah. I mean, it's dark, there's no lights and there, you know, maybe been 15 people coming in the last 10 or 15 minutes and it's just pouring down rain and I am soaked and I'm like, yeah. okay, it's a good way to end. Cause I'm tired and I'm yeah. cold and I'm worn out. <laughs> and Probably sick at that yeah, point. Exactly. <laughs> And that's just it. Yeah, that's that's the worst part is, you know, you you can tell by looking at me, you don't eat properly. No. I mean, you just, you know, you grab something here yeah. or there and you try to keep enough fluids in your body. And it's just, I mean, physically it's taxing. And I, I 
you know, you got to be prepared for that, but, uh, hopefully it'll, it'll carry forward into August. And uh, we'd plan to take, I'll be great. We'd plan to take a couple of weeks yeah. off. Yeah. We took like Wednesday off because we had commission meeting that day and then went right back at it on Thursday. So. Well, the beach is waiting on you in August. So <laughs> hopefully you'll get to e either picture. way. I have a vacation plan starting August 10th. As soon as we hit the gas yeah. at the commission that day, I'm leaving town to an undisclosed location and I don't no cell it. phone. One, I'm going to have one of those uh, little temporary uh, yeah. mobile phones in case the family needs me. But other than that, I'll be gone for a week. Well, so. I commend you on working hard. And two, something else that's impressed me is the other two candidates that Absolutely. you were running against in yeah. the primary. They both yeah. uh, offered their support, yeah. showing a lot of class yeah. and asking voters to vote for you. That means a lot. That yeah. says a lot about the class. It does. Of Good, each of the individuals. Yeah, a lot of integrity, a lot of character mm -hmm. from those guys. You know, and it gets, it, you've been through a, yeah. a tough primary as yeah. well. And, you know, your supporters get a little excited yeah. and overly excited sometimes and you can't control yeah it. i had one like that yeah <laughs> and you can't control what they put on facebook no. and you're like why do you want to do that that's not you uh, know you know sure we get we take different positions from from our primary opponents but basically i mean in your case and in mine too we were all republicans yeah. looking for we all said sort of the same thing we need to modernize the that's office there's some things it's not that the office is broken mm -hmm. out at the assessor's office we just need to, you know, re-energize and re not not even refocus, but just get some modernization. There's some things with the website that we all agreed on. Right. And, you know, there were a couple of other things that maybe, you know, some of the mapping systems that need to be looked at and, you know, how we can work better with county GIS, you know, because we have a mapping department right. within county government, how we can work that and coordinate right. the two a little better than what, what has happened. And that's, you know that's that's something we'll take a look well at. and that kind of brings me into what i wanted to discuss next looking forward between mm -hmm. now and august kind of what's your plan and i know that you have a lot of vision a lot of plans for the office once right. you get there but right. kind of what's your plan between now and august well the plan is you know campaigns take right. money i mean and that you know people right. say that guys you know i hate it but that's the way it is i mean putting out those putting out all those signs all the it's four by fours expensive. and the yard signs telling somebody that call me about they were running for the school board and i said you know you know those four by fours the sign and then the the post to put it up with whether you use rebar or fence post yeah. you're looking at 35 or 40 dollars a piece and when you start adding up three or four hundred of those countywide you know that turns into money and then every time you print something and mail it if you're going to mail something countywide you're looking at roughly nine or ten thousand dollars that's a lot of money to, you know and you do that three or four times next thing you know you you're going to need sixty to eighty thousand dollars easily and so that's what we're focused on right. now is is uh, is uh, raising some money to, to be ready to go because early voting will be here July 15th, which is not that far, away. Not far away. When you take you take Memorial Day weekend out mm -hmm. and you take the 4th of July mm -hmm. and then you've got graduations and all the school carnival. There are things that occupy people's time and a lot of people go on vacation right after school. But back to your point about Sterling Jaton and Randy Johnston, both mm -hmm. of those guys have been great. You yeah. and I and Mark were at a at an event last week for a school board race and Sterling said some kind of things and yeah and we've had lunch and we've exchanged a lot of text messages and he's being extremely helpful I can't say enough good things about he and Randy Johnston Randy's reached out to some of his supporters and as well folks that supported Randy right. and Sterling are, are reaching out to me now and uh, so that's 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 good that, that's great and yeah. I love seeing that yeah I think that's the way it should be it's hard you yeah. know there's going to be one winner right and it's hard and the thing is we, we have to at the end of the day remember we're all Republicans yeah and we we have to get behind the candidate it, and it's you know and that's it's tough at the at the local level because we live with each other nationally you know you got the Trump and the Cruz oh, supporters Lord. well they don't necessarily <laughs> I mean they live with each other locally That's but, true. but I mean for those of us in local office and local politics yeah you know we see each other on a That's pretty true. regular basis and you know so it's it's tough when you support somebody else and they don't win and um, I remember Phil Smart uh, soon after your primary yeah. at maybe your next fundraiser I can't remember what the event it was, was the very next one and uh, you know try, you know, and it was that's a tough race to lose. I mean, to lose a local race oh. and then to stand up and su publicly support your uh, the person that won the primary. So, cause well, he showed class. Yeah. And I'll tell you something. As a matter of fact, this evening I'm yeah. going, he's bringing in a, a football star right. from Brigham Young this yeah. afternoon, and I'm taking a plaque down there and I plan to black, brag on Phil. Yeah. Because exactly. this was all Phil's idea. And well, you get to represent the county. He called <laughs> me to represent the city since city council is having their meeting. And I said, oh, so I get the city, I get the city gig tonight.
have uh, aggravated some of our friends it, that we have at the but city council. But it means a lot. It does. For, for yeah. them to show a class like that exactly. and get behind you because you know they invested a lot. Exactly. And ran into a lot yeah. of time, a lot of money, and and so forth. So it's very, very, very uh, encouraging to see that. Well, and, and from that standpoint, in my uh, primary race for the county commission, Mitch McClure uh, is yeah. heavily involved at Dallas Bay Volunteer mm -hmm. Fire Department. And have been past president of PTA over at uh, Middle Valley, and you know we get along fine. I'm sure it's still frustrating to to have not won that that race back in 2012, but he's been more than helpful and, and been a uh, you know been a good guy all the way through. I can't say enough good things about you know about those kind of folks, the Phil Smarts and the Mitch Absolutely. McClure's and Sterling and Randy. So. And it's going to be an interesting process moving forward because. We we assume and, and believe you're going to win in August. Well, I don't get to assume. That. I don't assume you anything. Take it for granted. No, no, not at no all. you can't. You got to run the race. But we're we're hopeful you're going to win in August, well, and believe that you will be. And then that's going to open up a spot on the county commission. That will. So that's kind of going to be an interesting process because, from what I understand, there's going to be a special caucus held in just your district. Correct. Yeah. From and we were at the same meeting when that was discussed right. uh, from from a county Republican kind of standpoint. Explain what's going to Yeah. Gonna within uh, because of the fact that provided that I win in August and then would leave the commission at the end of uh, uh, August fourth is the election day and then would right. leave the commission at the end of August. There will be an opening within 120 days of a general election, right. which will be November the eighth. Exactly. I think is the date. Exactly. So uh, by by. Uh, state law, there has to be a party caucus on both sides, mm -hmm. both the Republican and the Democratic side. Each local party for District 3, Hickson, Middle Valley, uh, Lakeside, and Big Ridge, will have a caucus and will nominate a a, uh, uh, a candidate out of that caucus. So that person will have basically from the middle of September until they'll have about six weeks. Total. Yeah, because they'll be on the November ballot. Yeah, be on the November ballot, so they'll on the be presidential a ballot and a democrat Correct. and so they've only got like a, a short time about six weeks to campaign roughly maybe seven but yeah, yeah. not very much at all so it, and it, you're right it will be just the delegates that were seated at the county convention for each party in 2015 is that 35 delegates i think it's 35 out here and we've had two move out of the district so we're down i think now to maybe 33 oh, wow. maybe yeah so it's so it will be just those folks that will is a, that will nominate and then vote on the show up to participate yeah, provided the uh, uh, commission and i'm i'm working to ensure that there's going to be an, an, yeah. an opening we're not taking anything for granted we've got a, a kickoff campaign a general election kickoff next uh next friday night out in next door to your neighborhood at uh, we're at reunion uh, neighborhood uh, next friday night and then turn right around the next week and go to signal mountain turn around the next week in appleson or maybe it's two weeks and go uh, back to come back to East Brainerd, then we go out to Oodawa, out to Lookout Valley, and then we'll finish up at Hickson and Soddy Daisy. So we've got whatever number that is seven, right? Seven. Some are some are just really meet and greets, yeah. and some are true fundraisers. And because people we, people that want to get to know you, they should come out. To exactly. This is yeah. an opportunity to get to know you, ask yeah. you questions, find exactly. out what your vision is. Yeah. And you, you know, most of that is posted on our Facebook page, Marty Haynes for Assessor of Property. Make sure that's the right way yeah. we have it listed. Yeah. But uh, uh, you know, you can go to Facebook, and they're, uh, you know, they can call me. They, they can find the uh, the email address and send a shoot an email or or uh, uh, call whatever whatever. Yeah, if case they want to volunteer, absolutely, they can do that we, there. You, donate. And that's the other good thing. The, uh, Johnston and Sterling Jaton, you know, some of their volunteers, yeah. folks that were heavily involved in their campaign, that you know, put some sweat equity into those campaigns have, have said, Hey, where that's can we good. help? Where can we plug in? And several of those folks are coming next Friday night. So yeah, we'll, that that's really, really good. Yeah. So as far as the office itself, mm -hmm. I assume, cause I think the world of Mr. Bennett sure. has well, ran the office. Yeah. He's done a great job. He really he's going to leave big shoes to yeah. fill in. So. I, there, there are a couple of things that, that he said, maybe he'd like to see changed. And I said, well, you can go ahead and do that. And he yeah. said, no, I'll, you know, I'll let the next guy get here. And he said, I'm planning on it being you. So, and that's the other thing, you know, Bill Bennett, Claude Ramsey were the past two assessors, oh, yeah. uh, uh, Claude in 1980 and Bill came on board yeah. in 1992. You know, both of them have, have reached out to me. I, I give them credit. They call me mm -hmm. before I call them. That's great. And that, that means a lot to me that they took the time to reach out because they were Sterling and I had no problem yeah. with that. He had worked for both of them. So it made sense uh, uh, that they, that's who they would support. And, uh, 
Um, so it was, uh, it's, it's been good meetings and they've been very helpful. And, you know, a lot of folks, uh, uh that, that, uh, in the business community particularly have reached right. out to me in the last, last few weeks. Well, you have the right outlook too. Yeah. And I want to point that out because you're, you, you're being a big person. And, you know, I did that in my race, Marty, because I understood like with Phil Smart, for True. example, there was no question whether or not Phil Smart was a true Republican. He was one of the founders of the pack. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. and so in a primary. Right. It's tough. It and is. Those fellow Republicans, they're looking at all these Republican candidates yeah. and they're trying to think, who am I going to support? Yeah. Well, in my race, a lot of them supported Phil Smart just because of his long history exactly. with the Republican Party. Yeah. And I understood that. Right. There's no point getting mad about it. You, I expect people to support their friends. Right. I mean, and that's just, you know, that's just life. And it, But after and, that primary, it's time to get behind the candidate. You know, and I've talked to, to uh, several folks, and, and I'm sure it's in your business as well in real estate for you and Mark. Yeah. You know, you don't sell every house. That, you know, I mean, you don't get to sell to everybody that puts that's their house true. on the market. And likewise, in my business, I sell I sell products that are used in equipment to clean things. I mean, it's it's right. cleaning metal. Sandblasting. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, sandblasting. Basically, it's it's, it's like a, you know pressure washer, except we're adding a, an abrasive mm -hmm. to it. And I'm most likely going to get to sell my customers, continue to sell them the abrasive that's right. used, but I don't always get to sell them the equipment. And exactly. I can't hold a grudge. Because they didn't buy the exactly. equipment, because you know there's a 99 percent chance I'm going to put the put the abrasive in that uh, in that equipment. So business wise, you just don't get to hold a grudge. Is you know it, it just doesn't serve you well to do that. That's true, yeah. and that and that's a good analogy. Well, let's let's say okay, you August is here. You win the pro, you win the uh, general mm -hmm. election. Right. What it, what are your plans for the assessor office? Once elected. Well, and that's a good thing because you go into the the reassessment next year. So you yes. you know, provided we're successful in August and, and and take office, you take office September first. I think the swearing in they're planning for sometime that morning on right. September first. You know, they will the the office out there is already in the process of planning and being prepared for for the reassessment period next year. You're going to find out real quick in the office. Who's who's going to work hard? Because there are a lot of hours, and there's there'll be a lot of uh, uh, it'll be learning on the job, and right. I make no bones about that. Randy right. and Sterling both have worked in that office. Yeah. Um, but again, it's it's managing people and being involved with the, with the taxpayers and the citizens, right. and you know those those are the things. Is is right. next year's going to be? You know, I don't know what the reassessment's going to look like. We've had right. a lot of growth to go, and you know that's it, you know. I, I don't know whether four years is the right number, but that's the right. number that we use now. Some have, uh, you know, have, have talked about making it less, making it every two years. I don't know that that's feasible, mm -hmm. but that's a lot of man hours that, yeah. that go involved out there. And that's the one thing I've heard from from uh, folks when we were knocking on doors is, in most cases, they want government out of their lives as exactly. much as possible. But when it comes to this office, yeah, we want that hands on. Yeah. We want you to come, you know, physically look at our house and not just to drive by and. Yeah. Okay. That's and, and the accessibility. Exactly. I think is important. And, and that's some of the things that we want to do. And 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 no disrespect. I don't. I want to be careful how I say this. You know, Mr. Bennett's yeah. is is retiring, and you know, I want to be more accessible, much yeah. like we do on the commission. Yeah. You know, be involved and have some. I don't know the public meetings, but be right. available to do some radio and to be as, as many luncheons and breakfast and things that you can get to out of the office just right. just do it the way we're used to doing our jobs on the county commission well that office is very important to the real estate industry it is and that, yeah. that's one reason i want to have you on today because you can just about tie back anything to the real estate sure. industry it's so it's such an important industry and one thing i would like to see too is that we data share better between yes. yeah. the the real estate community here locally right. and the assessor's office. One example is square footage. Yes. That's hardly ever accurate. And you know, I'm not going to go measure right. a house because exactly. that's, that's, that's outside my scope of limits. Right. And I don't want to act like I know how to, <laughs> to go out and measure. I mean, it's, a, yeah. it's, it's about a lot more than just it, putting a, a, a tape across exactly, the room exactly. and getting a measurement because there's requirements on ceiling height and everything. Well, and that's one of the things that, that, you know, I've met with the local association and, right. and as you and Mark know, I have a real estate license. I haven't exactly. sold anything, haven't listed anything, but I did it to have access to the association. Good. You know, uh, I know you were at an event for the schools last night. Well, I took that opportunity to go out to the Realtors Association. They had their Habitat for yes, Humanity fundraiser, you know, and got to talk to folks. I mean, just literally just talk yeah. to them like we're doing today about what's going on in the real estate market. And what what they see, some of those that have have, have been around for a, a couple of days and have right. seen changes in our 
market here. And that's one thing that, you know, provided I'm successful in August, you know, these, the Realtors Association will have, I will have a presence with them. Right. I'll continue to keep my membership up. I don't know how I go about that. You can explain that to me at a later date or somebody can out there as yeah. to, you know, because I don't want to list any homes. I don't want to oh, sell any me, homes. They'll, they'll take your money. <laughs> That's what I figured. You know? they'll, they'll renew so, your money. They'll be glad deal. to. Yeah, so, somebody <laughs> asked me the other day about, about playing at a charity golf tournament sometime in the, in the next couple of months. And they said, you know, it's filling up. I said, you know, I bet if I show up with a check for a charity on the day of the tournament, they'll pretty much they'll take, make room. They'll make room for they'll you. put exactly. a golf club in your house. <laughs> exactly right. They'll find a spot for you. So, uh, um, but that, but that's it to have that interaction between the realtors association and, and maybe not every realtor, but at least the board of directors and, and what's going on in the association and, and just be abreast of, of the changes that y'all see. And I know that the, that the realtors do a lot of training, a lot more than, yeah. than people think. I mean, this is not just folks, folks that are in the real estate profession these days. I mean, that is a profession. It is, it is something that there's a lot more training than what it's most true. folks realize. And so. Uh, I want to be active with them and continue to keep, uh, you know, and improve the the lines of communication and find out where we can help. And as you say, share data and, and information. I think that's in important. Particular. See, that, yeah. that should be yeah. easy. Exactly. And, and it should be. And uh, the real estate industry, I mean, it just evolves oh, every year. Yeah. And we've always got new RESPA guidelines and stuff that we have to adhere to. Well, and something that we're familiar with is, is zoning at the, at yeah, the county commission. Absolutely. I think there were 28 was either 28 or 38 applications yesterday at the regional planning commission for yeah, zoning. That's unbelievable. And it, and it, and I think the next month, uh, in May, it's even more than that. I've already, I talked to the RPA regional planning agency and May is even heavier than what yesterday was. So, and all that, like you said, it affects everybody, whether you own property or you live in an apartment, somebody owns that property and is paying, paying an assessed value, paying taxes on that's that assessed true. value. Well, for anyone that's listening today that ha they haven't had the privilege and the pleasure of meeting Marty Haynes, tell us about this next event you're having yep. on, is that April 20th? April 22nd, 6 o'clock. It's at the Friday? The Friday night at uh, the Reunion Clubhouse, and that is on Morris Road. Yes, that's right, Morris Lane. I Morris think. Lane. Yeah. I don't know the that's exact. That's right. It's, a, it's, it's by next, the Publix. Next by the Publix. Door, before you get to Publix, take a right, go down Morris Lane. We'll be there at uh, 6 o'clock till about 8 o'clock. Uh, you know, if folks want to make a contribution, you know, we always put a price on there just yeah. so folks, but they don't, yeah. there's not a, not a contribution required that night. If you want to show up, we'd love to have, uh, and it looks like we're going to have a pretty good crowd that night. We're, yeah. We're worried now about space and availability. But well, we'll, we'll, we'll can't <laughs> Public's parking lot or if, something if we have to. If they show up with a check, you'll make yeah, room. Exactly right. Just like we said, for the, yeah, we'll make a lot of room if they want to. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Maybe we'll rent the parking spots for a dollar. I don't know, but. Uh, well, Thank you for being here, no, Marty. Thank you very much. Uh, you, you've been great, and I well, just appreciate you for taking the time thank, to stop by. Thanks to you and Mark. I know how much time and effort you put in on the commission, so thanks for all your oh, efforts there. Oh, yeah. It's we'll my pleasure. We'll see you in the morning. My see. pleasure. This is important, and I yeah. will see you in the morning at our yeah. commission meeting as we make those very important decisions for Hamilton County residents. Yeah. For anyone thinking about buying a home or selling a home, this is Sabrina Realty. Uh, please call us at 423-499-7780. That's 499-7780. Or visit our website at sabrinarealty.com and join us here after the break. We'll be back shortly.